Hi there folks, my name is NovaWing24 and welcome to the next episode in my little preview series of the upcoming Microsoft Flight Simulator. So today, we are going to go for a bit of a flight, a bit of a, a, bit of a commuter flight we're going to do today. So we're going to take a, uh, we're going to do a turboprop run. Uh, we're going to fly from uh, one of the, one of the exclusive or one of the, the high detailed airports. Uh, of the upcoming sim. We're going to be uh, leaving that one behind. We're going to be starting from Sydney and we're going to be heading up to my old home in Brisbane. And uh, we're going to do that today in a bit of a, you know, with, uh, with a twin engine, twin engine flavour, that one. So uh, first off, of course, I do want to thank this entire series. It's brought to you, uh, brought to you, thank, very thanks to Microsoft uh, for providing me the uh, review and the chance to bring this, uh, this content to you. And uh, we're going to be flying today using the Honeycomb Yoke and we're going to be using the Thrustmaster pedals today. So let's uh, get started. Now, one of the great things I'm going to be added to uh, as part of this video today is I get to show off some of the flight planning as well because I don't normally... I'm not normally the kind of guy that flies in a lot of that does, that does a lot of your your charts and sectionals and, and well, okay, well, I'll do charts, but I don't necessarily do airways and stuff like that. So we're going to be able to show how today how easy some of this is. Now we're using live weather. We're using a live conditions for this one today. We're going to zoom in down here. So we're going to be starting over at Kingsford Smith International today. So Yankee Sierra Sierra Sierra, Sierra Yankee. Uh, now, I've got to remember where we're going to be starting now. I'll probably be starting over here in the GA end is where we'll be starting. So let's uh, pick one over there, ramp 106. So we're going to set as our departure there. Um, and then we're going to be flying all the way up to Brisbane International. Um, now, I'm just actually just flying here to Wumba. Brisbane, West Welk. Yeah, I almost feel like we should go to West Welk Camp, actually. But, you know what? We're going to go to my old home because I did this run not that long ago. So we're going to do Brisbane International. That's going to be as our arrival today. So we're going to look at that. Now, in terms of how we're doing that, we should probably actually... We don't, we don't want a fuel box parking. Uh, so let's do GA medium ramp. There you go. That's better. Okay. Uh, so we're going to... It's The weather's not exactly the best. And this is one of the cool things I love about this. The fact that this this weather that we're seeing broadcast, you know, projecting onto the globe. This is live weather. This is actual weather that we're seeing. It's so cool. Anyway. Uh, okay. So by default, it'll show you the VFR direct uh, GPS route. Uh, but what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be doing a IFR route today. So we're going to be doing low altitude airways. Now the great part of that, that is it does all the calculations for you, which is kind of cool and awesome as well. Um, now it gives you a couple of different tracks that we can use and it uh, already figures out your departure runway. So we're going to be using the crosswind runway uh, for our departure today due to the... Uh, uh, it's not that real. Really, we could use any runway for our departure, really. Uh, but it looks like it's set us up with the... Uh, uh, yeah, so it's set us up with... Oh, no. We're not, having, not using the crosswind runway for our departure here. So we're using the one that uh, the uh, real-world traffic is using. So we've got that. And uh, we've got a cut. We've got a... Essentially, we've got uh, SID already programmed in. And then we just have to choose which routing we want to use. Um, I'm pretty happy with that routing we've been given um you know what actually i think actually you know what just to show it off i think actually we're going to go the slightly more coastal one i think so because that way i can fly over my current home of newcastle so we can pick this one so simply just by clicking it Straight away, it re recomputes everything for us and puts all our nav log in there together. Uh, and you can slide across and actually see all the points along the way. So, so simple and easy, and that's awesome. So, it's just a departure. You know, it allows you to. Yeah, you can actually change your departure if you wanted to as well, which is even, which is even better. Like that's just. It's so simple, this one. And if you do want to change your SID and star that you want to use, you can just simply do that as well. Like it's just so simple. It really is. I love it. Okay, so that's the flight we're going to be doing today. So as I said, we're going to be using our King Air 350 today. Um, we should probably fill us up. We'll do a bit of a challenge. We might actually do a full uh, a full fuel load today. Do 100% uh, probably. Let's do let's do 75% fuel. That'd be enough. All right. And we have a full passenger load today. So we're doing our 
executive run. We've got our uh, pilot and our AI co-pilot, and then we've got our four passengers on board. So all set up there, ready to go. Okay, I think this is ready to go. So we've got our flight programmed in. Excellent to see. We have to see uh, some cool places along the way. Let's jump in and start flying. And what disgustingly terrible conditions to greet us in Sydney. So, you know what? I think I'm glad I'm flying out of Sydney. Hopefully, hopefully we're flying to the sunshine state today, but definitely still looking good. Okay, so let's uh, jump in here, go ready to fly. Now, I must admit that one of the things about the aircraft in this sim at the moment, as I said, like this is still a beta, don't forget folks, and the checklist for the King Air and some of the features of the King Air are definitely not complete at the moment. So uh, let's go through, but let's uh, first off, get uh, go through our before start checklists. All right, so first things first, we've got parking brake is set. Power levers set to idle, prop uh, the levers set to full RPM. So let's bring those forward, get past the feather gate. All right, condition levers in fuel cutoff. Check and check. Battery switch to on. Go over to our starting engine sequence. Okay. Now, what I might do is I might turn our panel lights on because we're looking pretty terrible in the dark here at the moment. Uh, okay, so first off here, we've got our right engine ignition and engine start to on. So we've got that, that is down here. Twelve spinning up. Engine good. And ignition off. All right. Time to replace, you know, repeat with the left engine. And one twelve percent. Sydney ground beach craft November Oscar Victor Alpha two for requesting Excellent. pushback. With our AI control our comms. Beachcraft, November, Oscar, Victor, Alpha, and 2-4 pushback request accepted. Now we've got our gens are on, avionics buses are on. Excellent. Alright, looking good. Pitot heat's on. Parking brakes off to allow our pushback. Looking good. Get our nav and strobe lights are on, and get our we'll leave our taxi lights off until after we've got our ground crew clear. All right. System test okay. Sydney ground Beechcraft November Oscar Victor Alpha two for requesting the end of pushback. Beechcraft November Oscar Victor uh, Alpha. Put my tow brakes on to make sure we don't taxi into that guy. Alright, now while Sydney Ground Beachcraft November Oscar uh, Victor Alpha 2 for ready to taxi. Co pilot handles that. Them. We're gonna get our CDI source set to our FMS, because we'll need Beachcraft, that. November Oscar Victor Alpha 2 for taxi to and hold short of runway 7 using taxiway Delta Oscar Mike 4 Golf Cross Runway 16 Right Golf Yankee Hotel Golf 2 Contact Tower on 120 decimal 5 when ready. Taxiing hold short runway 7 using taxiway Delta Oscar Mike 4 Golf Cross Runway 16 Right Golf Yankee Hotel Golf 2 Beachcraft Alpha 24. Alright, we're going to arm the auto ignition now for if we have any failures in flight. Okay, time to taxi out.
This you guys are uh, going to get some nice, you should be able to see some of the nice rain effects on this aircraft though. One thing about PT-6s is that they are so powerful that pretty much even with them sitting at idle, uh, you can really sort of uh, taxi along here at a fair rate of knots. So you've got to watch the brakes for those things, for these uh, aircraft as well. Gently just tap the tow brakes every now and again. Vehicle driving past. Alright, now we've got our flap set to take off. So it looks like that uh, the ATC have given us the crosswind runway for our departure today. good because it shows that the the ATC and the in-sim ATC does is responsive to conditions uh, as they get loaded into the aircraft as well. Plus also our um, SID that we did program in was for a 07, uh, a runway 07. So that probably did also help as well. Our departure runway. Hold short. Sydney Tower Beechcraft November Oscar Victor Alpha 24 at runway 7 ready for takeoff departure to the north. Beechcraft November Oscar Victor Alpha 24 cleared for takeoff runway 7 north departure approved. Alright, so let's have a look. Windshield DI, so we're going to make sure they're on. Cleared for takeoff runway 7 Beechcraft Alpha 24. Prop DI is on. Time for us to go! Good. Everything lined up. Now, 
one final thing that I didn't check before, we should probably do, we should probably set uh, altitude that we're aiming for, which is we're going to be aiming for 27,000 feet today. Okay, let's aim for that. Alright, we set our FMS as our uh, course. Excellent, looking good. Alright, time to go. And throttles up. Traveling. Beechcraft Alpha 2 for continue for north departure. I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. Sydney Tower Beechcraft November Oscar Victor Alpha 2 for continue for north departure. Stand up. That real drop when uh, when the flaps clean up. Still good speed, good setting. Beachcraft Alpha Two Four, you are leaving my airspace. Frequency change approved. Sydney Tower Beechcraft November Oscar Victor Alpha 24 frequency change. Definitely terrible weather in Sydney Beechcraft today. Beechcraft November Oscar Victor Alpha 24 is type Beechcraft King Air 3 miles northeast of Sydney 1400 feet request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. Beechcraft November Oscar Victor Alpha 24 approach squawk 0537. Squawk 0537 Beechcraft Alpha 24. Beechcraft Alpha 24 radar contact 5 miles east of Sydney, 2300 feet cleared through the Charlie airspace. Maintain on navigation. I just generally follow the MS, but we can see those pockets just in the clouds above us. So uh, hopefully we'll have a good cruising, uh, good clear cruising run once we get up to cruising altitude. Definitely leaving mucky Sydney behind. Oh, but look at those cloud formations. Oh. This is the thing about this sim, is that it is beautiful. Terrifying, but also beautiful. So we've got a cruise altitude set. Navigation set to a CDI. Bigger speed with our altitude selected, heading towards our altitude. So we're looking good there. Just uh, in a bit of murk at the moment as we clear through, but oh, look at that beautiful punch through. That is spectacular. Not as, it didn't feel as bumpy going through the clouds as I was expecting though, I must admit. I was expecting it to be a bit more bumpy coming up through those clouds. But still though, so as we've come up through that, uh, those clouds very quickly, we've picked up quite a lot of ice accumulation as we've come through, uh, which is definitely uh, probably some challenges, uh, but we've got our de-icing boots on, so hopefully uh, everything will be fine as we continue on. But I think we might pick a slightly lower cruising altitude because I can see already that we're really taking that's definitely impacting our aerodynamics. So let's uh, let's uh, set uh, a slightly lower cruising altitude, I think, uh, until we finish burning away some of that ice. Like you can already see, actually, um, that the ice has been moved, has gone away from much of the engine intake, which is good. So our engine should be fine. 
look how amazing does that look though, like visually it's just incredible. So now that we have all of our uh, de-icing on, this is actually probably a good chance to have a chat about the King Air. So the King Air, the King Air for me is one of my favourite aircraft of all time to be honest. Like I absolutely love the King Air. I, I grew up being a passenger in them and my family have flown them for many, many, many years. So I've always loved the King Air. Um, this one is definitely not in a finished state at the moment, that is for sure. I mean, the modeling is absolutely incredible, though the texturing does look a little bit flat. The implementation um, of the, the glass cockpit, I think, is, a, is again, it's fairly decent. It's a, it's a comparable. Um, it does what it says on the tin, so I'm definitely impressed about that. Um, the systems modeling for, in terms of the fuel, is fine. However, a lot of the other systems, including things like the alternate static and, and, and things or stuff like that, they're not so much modeled at the moment. I think we probably, we might see those come in time, uh, but for now they're definitely not here. The autopilot though is fully functional, as obviously we're using it now as part of our FMS. However, the actual FMS sort of system down here, uh, that is not operational um, at this time. We may see it come in the future, um, but for now all the controls here on this center uh, console are not available at the moment, which is, eh, it's, a, it's a bit of a shame that one. Uh, hopefully we'll see that change into the future. Otherwise, everything else, it does what it says on the tin, and so far, I'm fairly impressed by it. I think um, the one thing I do would say, though, is that not all of the de-icing is effectively modelled. Um, but we'll probably have a look. But you know, having said that, yeah, we've got everything on. We'll leave it on for a few minutes and see how it looks. But uh, in the meantime, I think we've got our, we've established up in our cruise. Want our throttles back a little bit for the cruise. And uh, let's see how the weather goes as we head up to Queensland. One of the uh, challenges of the way they've done the avionics in the King Air, or rather one of the things that I wasn't familiar with, is how to actually bring up some of the NAM comm frequencies. So to access comm frequencies is fairly obvious uh, using the uh, the touch panel here. You simply press, press the comm, there it goes, they swap between one and two the standby but to change what the standby is you press the standby button here and you can punch in the frequency you want to go to um, however nav radios is a little less obvious um, so to do nav radios you have to press the split button here which gives you these options here and then you get three little touchscreen options down the bottom here so the first one you've got is the map, which is essentially sort of what we've got over there. Then you have FPL, so that's sort of like, yeah, this gives you your flight plan procedure page. And this is where you can actually change. So you can, you know, change, look at your active flight plan, you can look at procedures that are in the system, nearest airports, um, your normal map that we just came from, direct to GPS, or your NAV1, NAV2 frequencies. So for these ones, this is where you actually punch them in. So you actually, and this is, and it goes at the moment. There's nothing active, so we go one one zero decimal one because that's going to be the ILS frequency we're going to be using when we come into Brisbane, and we go enter, and now it's done, and it's now available on there. So as I said, it's an interesting little thing that you have to press this flight plan procedure um, touchscreen component in order to be able to actually access the NAV frequency. So yeah, just something to be aware of if you would, if you weren't finding it before. Hopefully we'll see a full, yeah, it'd be, I'm not sure if we're going to see full manuals for each of the default aircraft, but it'll be interesting to see if we either don't get full manuals or maybe um, some tutorial missions on how to actually do stuff like this. Just enjoying this beautiful view of uh, the Australian Eastern Seaboard there as we're flying up the coast along the path. This is, I must admit, this is a pretty amazing route to fly this one because you have this you know, beautiful view of the uh, Australian eastern coastline and then sort of got these rolling clouds now, especially with the weather today. Because there was a big system that actually moved through, came from Western, all the way from Western Australia uh, and actually pushed through over the last uh, over the last seven days or so and actually sort of deposited a lot of rain across the eastern seaboard. You're actually now watching it sort of scatter parts of it still coming across but also that rest of it coming out, going out to sea as well. Uh, just the beautiful green sides of the uh, of the Australian Eastern Seaboard, and uh, down there it'd be Coffs Harbour Airport. Yeah, it'd be, yeah, it'd be Coffs Harbour Airport that we're about to fly over there. 
not where we're stopping today, but uh, maybe we'll stop in a uh, in a future episode. That's, by the way, just what's happening there in the, with the, the radios at the moment is actually really, really interesting. So, what that is, that's one of the, that's the sim attempting to sort of work with the injected uh, AI from FlightAware. So that's, I just checked it. So that is an actual Qantas flight that is currently flying up to Brisbane. Um, and it's interesting, so it's the, the, the in-sim ATC has been trying to tell it to, to go to 10,000 feet. Um, when it's actually cruising at the moment at 39,000 feet. And it's really interesting because the, the sim's still trying to tell it and still trying to do it, but it actually shows that they are trying to blend it more in because one of the early issues with, uh, with the AI and using that live flight aware data was the fact that you just disappear once it landed on the ground, but now it knows not to do, the sim knows not to do that and will still send it to an actual parking gate, which is such an amazing like piece of kit and tech that comes behind this sim and just goes to show how far we really have come in terms of flight simulators and what they're capable of for our desktop environments. I'm also surprised it's not just, it's the other thing I'm impressed as well is that the amount of of cloud layers that are being represented here and still the performance is just so damn smooth about it. It's another thing that was always a challenge with previous sims. Um, of a variety of different ones is that the more cloud objects that you have that you have that your sim has to render the worse your performance was and yet here we have all of these clouds and all of these layers and yet it's just smooth silver a couple of stutters here and there absolutely but overall the experience is just amazing compared to previous sims as well and just yeah having things pop the way they are sort of growing into existence naturally and naturally forming. That's a huge deal for this. It really, really genuinely is. 3,000 as we uh, cross, gonna make sure we do it. 3,000 as we cross over the islands there over North, Strad over North Stradbroke Island. I didn't realize that when I uh, picked this flight to do for you guys that it was gonna be a, uh, a very much an instrument flight. I did not realize that. But, good way to test it. Great way to see, to see all of the different elements of the weather engine coming together. Of the portrayal of real world weather, and how it's looking, how it's growing, and actually sort of, even looking at how the sun is actually sort of going through those clouds, and how it patchwork, patchworks down onto the layers below it. Like, that's a an amazing thing that we're getting to see right there. Brisbane Tower Beach Crab, November Oscar Victor Alpha 24 is 11 miles northeast nice. of Alpha to land. Beach Crab, November Oscar Victor Alpha 24 Brisbane Tower makes straight in runway 19 or left altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 3 wow. wind 3 5 9 or at 1 2. Fly straight in runway 19 or left Beach Crab Alpha 24. I'll take it, but interesting that it's not giving me any ILS, but I do have the visual, so I will take it. I would have expected that they would have given us the, uh, the ILS frequency. But Definitely a lot more trees than uh, I remember being here in Brisbane. Too close, I think, here. Not 
not going to have enough time to clear the runway before we're going to have to go around again. Definitely going to be minimums today. Talk about minimums, Jesus. So there's a little bit, little bit. Beachcraft Alpha two four exit runway when able. Clear off that runway as soon as we can. All that traffic behind us. Parking. Brisbane Ground, Beechcraft, November Oscar, Victor Alpha, 24 request taxi to parking. Beechcraft, November Oscar, Victor Alpha, 24 taxi to general aviation parking via taxiway Bravo. Taxiing to general aviation parking using taxiway Bravo, Beechcraft, Alpha, 24. Okay. There we go. We can hide that one away now. Well, that was definitely um, more uh, more engaging than I was expecting it to be. All right, let's have a look here. Time since I've been on this GA ramp. Okay, and we get to uh, we get to show off the uh, some of the ground services now. Actually, as we do this parking today. All right. With act with the marshalling signals. There we go, and done in place. Let's uh, pop our parking brake on. There we go. And fuel cut off, and there we go. Because we'd uh, planned a flight plan, it actually finishes us with this lovely little menu here, summarizing our flight plan. There, so there you go. That was fun.
that was kind of cool. Okay. Unfortunately, one thing that I haven't figured out yet is how to open any external doors on GA aircraft. So hopefully we'll see that come sooner rather than later. But otherwise, there we are. That was our little flight of uh, following how to file flight plans, how to fly them. And uh, an impromptu way of how to manage dealing with real-world traffic alongside the in-sim traffic as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun for me. Got to show off a lot of cool stuff and get some stuff done that I didn't expect to show off to you guys. That's cool. Alright folks, well that does wrap up this video now. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, once again, I want to say thank you, huge thank you to Microsoft uh, for providing me the chance to be able to bring this uh, stuff to you guys early. Uh, and again, this flight was powered by Honeycomb Aeronautics uh, and their Alpha Yoke and Thrustmaster with their TPR pedals. Alright folks, thanks very much for joining me. Don't forget as always to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed these videos and want to see more. And of course as always you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search NovaWing24. Alright folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.